My name is Cyrus Marcus Ware, and I'm an artist, an activist, and a scholar. I started making work as a child. Growing up in an artistic household, I was really encouraged to be creative from a young age. I started making work about politics and about social justice in my teens and early 20s and really found a way to bring activism into my creative practice. But I've chosen to make home here in Takaranto. This city is a beautiful place. We have this thriving and beautiful black, queer, and trans community that I'm very much a part of. And we have this thriving arts community here. So for me, as a mad, disabled, black, trans artist, I feel very much at home here. My project for the biennial is called MBL Freedom. The project is an installation, it's a film project, it's a play, it's a performance. It really is speaking to, I think, a lot of questions that people have had over the last two years, which is what kind of world are we trying to build and how are we going to build it together? It's part two of Antarctica, which was a project I presented at the 2019 Biennial that told the story of three BIPOC Antarcticans who had been sent to Antarctica to stake a future land claim. It's based on a true fact that 11 people have been sent to Antarctica to be born to set up future colonies. And this play and installation that I created in 2019 offered insight into what would happen if people actually were sent there because of climate change, because of race wars. What if that was the last habitable place on Earth? Where we left off at the last biennial was the three freedom fighters deciding to leave to go to find freedom in the only part of Antarctica that hasn't been claimed by someone, and that's Mary Bird Land. You know, a lot of people told me at the end of the last biennial, what's going to happen? Are they going to survive? Do they make it in the icy waters to freedom? And, you know, I wanted to tell a story that was a bit more complicated than just they survived or they didn't. They survive but what they find when they get there has them questioning their very purpose of being there. To show this work in Toronto after the last two years of isolation is really significant for me. This project explores the idea of building a future world where we all get to make it. And I think if one thing is marked for me from this time period in our life is that a lot of us got to spend time during this pandemic thinking about what we wanted to see differently in the world when we emerged out of COVID. So this project allows us to dream, what would an abolitionist society look like? One that didn't rely on punishment and punitive and carceral measures to solve conflict, crisis and harm. It allows us to talk about climate change and to think about, well, what do we need to do right now in order to create the conditions where we have lots of places to live, not just Antarctica. So I'm hoping that this project both reaches everybody, you know, sort of generally in the city, to have them thinking about colonialism in different ways, but I hope it also reaches people who have decision-making roles who can help us to hopefully undo some of this path that we've gone down in terms of colonialism, white supremacy, and climate. The most important thing supporting me through the pandemic has been art making and activism. I've spent the pandemic making work about the world, making drawings, making paintings, making posters, engaging in banner making and projects that help us to think about a different kind of world being possible. Creative activism, you know, that's where the magic is. It was amazing for me to be able to be part of both the 2019 and the 2022 biennial because I got to see a project over a long period of time and I'm really thankful to the biennial for supporting my practice in that way and allowing me to think big and to dream into this project over a, a period of years. As an artist looking to the future, I, I feel really excited with the possibilities. And then just dreaming into all of the ways that artistic practice is going to look different if we achieve our goal of transforming the social world that we're in. So once we dismantle some of the white supremacy that we see in our society. And once we create sustainable conditions for our climate and for our life, and once we you know, create a world where black people are considered inherently valuable, what kind of art will be created and what possibilities are there? And so I feel very, very excited about our future.